shall I see the Lord. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain that we can take nothing out of it. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days that I might certify how long I have to live. Behold, thou hast made my days as a span and mine age is even as nothing in respect of thee. And verily every man living is all together vanity. For a man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieteth himself in vain. He heapeth up riches and cannot tell who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is in thee. Lord, please deliver me from my offenses and make me not a rebuke unto the foolish. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and with thine ears consider my calling. Hold not thy peace at my tears. For I spare me a little that I may recover my strength before I go hence and be no more seen. Lord, thou hast been my refuge and my strength. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting unto everlasting, thou art God. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and is as a watch in the night. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Lord, make me to know my way and to walk in thy way before thee. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them not be ashamed who partake and walk upright before me. 
Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For art thou the God of my salvation, in thee do I wait all day long. Remember me, O Lord. Have tender mercies and loving kindness upon me. God is upright. What man is that that feareth the Lord? He shall teach all the ways of the Lord, and his soul shall dwell at ease, and his seed shall inherit the earth. Unto thee I cry, O Lord, be thou not silent. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward thee. Amen. Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me, and prove my ways, Amen. that I may publish within the voice of thanksgiving and tell all of the wondrous works of the Lord. God is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Amen. There is a river that streams whereof to make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my prayer, O my God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me, and hear me. I mourn in my complaint and make a noise. My heart is so pained, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. But the Lord saveth his people. The Lord bless thee out of Zion, and the Lord keep you in the sin of his will. Amen. You might be seated at this time. God bless each of you. We have come today to celebrate and to honor the memory, the loving memory of Ms. Dorothy English. Amen. I celebrate with this family And I mourn with the family because I'm a part of this family. But we have assurance from God that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. In our darkest hours, he will be our light. In our toughest times, he will still be with us. 
So can we give the Lord just a hand praise today? I know, I know what it is. But from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord should be praised. And we thank God for you today. Thank God for each of you that's come in support of this family to honor the life of my dear cousin and to show your respects. So we're going to begin this service with a music collection. I'm free. Old Testament reading, Elder Charlotte Brown. New Testament, Bishop Ricky Jackson prayer. Bishop Ricky Jackson, then the musical selection. When you hear my home going, Ms. Gloria Smith. And our service will continue as outlined. Thank you. Come on, free folks, praise God. Yes, Lord. For your hearing, I will be reading Proverbs 3 and 5 from the King James Version. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. The word of God for the people of God. New Testament scripture will be coming from the first book of Thessalonians, chapter number four. I'm going to begin reading into your hearing at verse number 13. Here you shall find these words of the Lord recorded. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice 
of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Bow your heads with us. Eternal and all wise God, our Father. It is in the precious name of your dear Son, Lord Jesus Christ, that we stand here, Father, in this place, at this hour. Thanking you, Father, always for all of your many, many blessings. Thanking you, Father, for your tender mercies, for your loving, loving kindness. But this moment, Lord, we want to thank you for your listening ear to the prayers of your servants as I pray over this loving family. Asking you, Father, right now to help them to know and to understand it and to believe that at this moment they can cast all of their cares upon you because you care about them. Further help them to know and to understand that they can lift up their eyes unto the hills from whence cometh all of our help. Lord, knowing that all of our help cometh, hallelujah, cometh from thee. Father God, be a God unto them. Be their comforter. Be their strength. Guide their hearts and guide their minds. So be with them, Lord God, and strengthen them, Lord, in their time, Lord God of weakness. We know right now that God, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we have spoken out of our mouths. So we take this time to thank you for hearing this prayer and for bestowing the blessings that has proceeded out of my mouth upon this family. In the name, Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. you to pray for us on today. <clears throat> when you hear of my home going, don't you worry about me. Oh, yeah. oh, when you hear of my home going, just don't worry about me. Now when you hear about my home going, I sure been born again. 
Oh, because I made my preparation one day. Because, Lord, I didn't know when that you were going to call me. Say, Mother, it's your time to go. Oh, yes. But I'm fixed up and I'm ready. Oh, yes. Church, I'm on my way home. Oh, so when you hear about my home going, oh, just don't worry about me. Oh, when you hear of my home going, just don't worry about me. Oh, when you hear of my home going, you don't have to worry about me. Oh, yes, cause I'm just another one. Oh, yes, and God called me home. my friend they don't have to worry about me and you can tell my family you don't have to cry over me and to all of my loved ones just don't worry about me Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, first of all, I'm a, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out here um, to celebrate my aunt's um, home going. But there's one thing that I'd like to ask of, um, everyone is that is that Pauline Carson loves and appreciate everyone that has come out here to see her and to be with her in her um, bereavement. But she asks that you do not embrace her at this time, that you just give her a fist bump. And I have a um, tribute, or a paper that I wrote for my aunt, and it says, a, a rose that had to fade. Mm. The rose is nothing without the sun, the rain, and the soil. So go be bright and vibrant, beautiful, and full of happiness. Life does not exist without birth, living, and dying. Memories are filled with laughter, joy, and pain. Like the petals that falls back, excuse me, like the petals that falls from the rose back to the earth, one day so must I. As a beautiful, as, excuse, as a rose so beautifully falls and delights so many and let another shine, there is not much difference between the life of a rose and mine. It is my prayer that you take the life of this rose, grow, be vibrant, and light, let your light shine. As this rose has faded, let, let my love remain with you. Let the tears drive before the
Good evening, church. I know protocols have been established, but I just want to make sure to say good evening again. Um, this is tough because I wanted to figure a way to honor my aunt, one of the favorite persons in my life, and I decided the best way not to is not to write anything. Speak strictly from the heart because that's what we heard. Out. And when I talked from the heart, we didn't sugarcoat it. We always were straight with each other. And I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for her. People always say, why do you always say she's your favorite aunt or your favorite person? And they assumed it would be because my senior in high school, she, she, took me, she, she took me in, even though she couldn't afford another mouth to feed, but she did. That's not the reason. It could have been because she treated me just like I was one of her own. You couldn't tell the difference. It still wasn't a reason why she's my favorite. And it was because when I did get a job and I tried to help out, she refused to take the money. Even if I left it on her pillow somewhere, she would put it back and say, don't do it again. And she meant that too. She said, I want you to make sure when you're ready to go to school, you're ready. That's still not the reason why she's my favorite. And it isn't that when it was time for me to go to school, I did not know what Denmark South Carolina was, had no idea. Didn't know how I was gonna get there. We didn't discuss it. But that Sunday morning, at that really that Saturday night when she packed my helped me pack my stuff up and get ready. Sunday morning, there was a ride out there. Her and one of her friends took me to school. Didn't even tell me, but she made sure that I got there. That should be a great reason she'll be in my favor, but I still not. Even when it was time for her to go, she reached in her pocketbook. Excuse me. She took out her last $25 and said, hey, here. And I said, Auntie, I'm good. She said, no, keep this just in case. You might need an emergency or something. And I said, thank you. And that, still, that should be the great reason why she's one of my favorites, not, still not. And even when I came from a school and from friends and didn't even tell her I was coming or I was bringing a guest, knowing our situation, she still welcomed the guests treated my friend like they was her nephew, just as well as she did me. And I'm always gonna be indebted for what she did and how she treated me. Because there was one time in my life I felt like I found a home. Faye, Diane, Mike, Trina, Tony, Sandra, Tony, they didn't see that they was my first cousins, they were like my sisters and brothers. But the reason that she's my favorite because simple, because she loved me unconditionally and unapologetically, she loved me. And that was the reason behind it all. Her love for me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I tried this one time before and didn't, didn't have the courage to, uh, to follow through with it. But I thought about my grandmother, and um, she was strength. So I'm, I'm pulling a little bit of strength from her to, to do, do this here for my grandmother. wrote a poem entitled Dorothy. You had to be there. Boy, was I something to aspire. At least, at least you couldn't tell me better. From Booker T to JT, I'd paint my nails. 
from Booker T to JT, I paint my nails red, curl my hair, and go cut a rug with my sister Sarah. Lord knows I've raised some strong, some strong kids, my legend number seven. But y'all know over the years, my heart grew heavier and heavier as Tony and Mike's voice grew louder, calling for their mommy, their mommy from heaven. I can go on all day talking about my grands, who are all my rays of shining light. Y'all confuse me with all this technology, <laughs> but you just gave me something to brag about on my bingo nights. My skin had wrinkled and become soft as a dove. My hair still long and pretty with legacy grays filled with wisdom and love. Through storms and through sun sunshine, my spirit held fast. I had to fight its tenacity that would forever last. I balled my fist up and told counsel time and time again, no, not today, I have more love to give. Now I have unfolded my wings for I have no more pain to live. If you listen to me, I told y'all this time was coming. My last stop is here. Let the words I left, let, let the words I left you with ease, your, ease you through your morning as, as I have entered the heaven's gates with no fear. She was gracious, courageous, and now she's delivered. Remember me, my name is Dorothy. Thank each one of you that have participated in your own way. I'm sure the family appreciates you pouring out your heart. At this time, we'll have a musical lecture, Take Me to the King, and then I will return with words of comfort. Take me to the king. <laughs> I'm tired Options are few I'm trying to pray But where are you? I'm all churched out Hurt and abused I can't face I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry, even if I try, but still my Bye. 
of the King. Amen. God bless you for that song. Take me to the King. I honor the Lord today who is indeed the head of my life. I will admit without him I could do nothing. I realize I didn't wake myself up this morning. Yeah, my alarm clock went off, but a lot of people's clocks went off and they didn't get up. So I give God the glory. Mm. I realize that I don't give myself strength. I'm not strengthening myself to be here. But it's the power of God that gives me strength. And I still believe that in all things we give thanks to God. Somebody said God is good all the time and all the time God is good. You say, well, what's good? God gave Dorothy all of these years. That's good, isn't it? Blessed her to bless us. That's good, isn't it? Love this family. That's good, isn't it? So we give praise and honor to the name of the Lord. I certainly honor this family, and as I said, I'm a part of this family as well. Dorothy is my first cousin. My mom and her mom were sisters. And anybody in this family could tell you those sisters loved each other. And they taught us to love one another. And so you've heard the good things about her, and I praise the Lord for her life and her presence. Um, when I was just five years old, my older sister, who was 11 years old, passed away. She had rheumatic fever, and my mother kept close watch on me because I had fevers growing up. Having had one child to succumb to fevers, uh, which caused a condition of the heart, she kept a close eye on me. But she always trusted me with this family because she knew the way that family loved me was the way I should be loved. And I got to tell you, it's challenging to eulogize a member of your family. But anytime I'm asked to do so, I feel honored. And a friend of mine called me and said, I can't be with you today, but do what you do. And I said, I will do my absolute best, because you don't get another time. This is one of those things you only do once. 
And so in the name of Jesus, we do the best that we possibly can. I honor the Lord today to acknowledge the presence of Elder Brown and Bishop Jackson. And I thank God for all of you who come in support of this family. May the Lord continue to bless you real good. Now the word of the Lord speaks to us for comfort, hope, and inspiration. From the book of Job chapter 14 and verse 14. Very familiar scripture. It says, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. If a man dies, shall he live again? I think most of us are familiar with the story of Job and his tests, his trials, and most of all, his suffering. And Job got to the place where he was, and I understand it, uh, he was just discouraged, disheartened, disillusioned. Some scholars say he asked three theological questions. How can a man be justified with God? And then he got so irritated until he said, I wish I could just find God. I plead my case to him. But then he asked a question, sober question, if a man dies, shall he live again? Mm -hmm. Now Job had never experienced anybody coming back to life. Scholars said he lived before Abraham, before the law, before Elijah and Elisha performed those miracles. But there was something down in his heart that caused him to think maybe a man could live again. He says, I, I, I've seen trees and you cut them down. And with just a hint of water, they'll come back to life. He says, I've seen flowers that were cut down and you give it a little water and it come back to life. He said, but it looks like man dies and he wastes away. Never to return. But that question lingered in his mind, if a man die, shall he live again? And I want to tell you, that's, that's something that we have, to, we have to think about. Because death is inevitable. Now, I, I'm not here to bring doom and gloom. I just want you to know the reality of it. Death is inevitable. Now, as a preacher, you can, you can assume that I believe the Bible, and, and it's true. I believe it. And the first understanding or pronouncement of death was by God. And so lots of people say, well, you know, I know y'all read that Bible, and, but man wrote the Bible. I said, absolutely right. But man wrote every other book you read, too. <laughs> and so if I can believe the science book and the English book and all those other books, I can believe the Holy Bible because the Bible says holy men wrote as they were moved, inspired, acted upon by the living God of heaven and earth. Hebrews 9 and 27 says, it is appointed unto all men once to die. But that's not the end. After that comes the judgment. The Bible gives us a chronology of Adam and who lived how long. And I'm going to show you how death is, is inevitable. The Bible says Adam lived 930 years and he died. Seth lived 912 years, and he died. Enos lived 905 years, and he died. Methuselah lived 969 years, and he died. I don't know how many years I will live, but I will die. And I know when, when we talk about this, people say, well, what, what, what about those years? Were they 365 days years? I got to tell you, I study the Bible all the time, but I don't know. But that's not the point. The point is not how long they lived. They didn't have the number of years that they lived in common. But what they had in common was no matter how long they lived, 
they all died. Y'all doing good helping me preach this thing. Now Job's question was never answered in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, the answer was in Jesus Christ. When Jesus came and, and around the grave of Lazarus and, and, and Martha and Mary were so disillusioned and Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Jesus said, don't worry about it. You're going to see your brother again. She says, I know I'll see him again at the last day and at the resurrection. And if you let me paraphrase a little bit, Jesus said, yeah, you know that. But what you don't know is I am the resurrection. And I am the life. And the same power it would take to get him up in the last day, I got it today. Come on out of that grave. Jesus answered the question, a man could live and die and yet live again. Yes. Now when I was in school, I didn't like science a whole lot. But there's one thing they said I remembered after all of these days. They taught us that matter or substance can never be destroyed. Anybody remember that in, in, in school? Maybe they ain't teaching that now, but that's what they taught us. <laughs> it's called the law of the conservation of mass. Well, you can take water and freeze it, and it changes its form, but it still exists. You can thaw that ice out, and it becomes water, but it still exists. You can boil the water and it becomes steam, but it still exists. Come on, come on. So if it's true that you can't destroy matter, it says to me, we're going to live forever in some form. And I want to live in a form where I can go and see the king in peace and harmony and tranquility. I want to live in the presence of the almighty God. Job must have had something in mind when he said, and though the skin worm devour this body, yet in my flesh, Shall I see the Lord? Paul says, you know, when you die, you will sow. You will go in the ground like a mortal body, but you will come out with incorruption. And I want to tell you, just before I go to my seat, I, I want to go see this king. How about you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I can't go see the king looking like this. If you went to see the king in England, you couldn't just look any kind of way. You had to look a special way. They'd have to groom you to see the king. And this old body ain't fit for me to see the king. But when the Lord comes, he's going to transform this body. In a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, at the last trump, the Lord will put us in a form that make us worthy to see him. But I want to tell you, it's just not because of who we are. Is because of who Christ is. You won't live in peace just because of who you are or what you've done or where you've been or where you've been educated or how much money you got. You will live in peace because of who Christ is. And because of who Christ is, I want to come to know him in the presence, hallelujah, of his glory. I want to know how good God is by my being servant of his and watching him glorify me, hallelujah, by his own word. And I want to tell you, in order to get prepared to see Jesus, we have to turn from our own ways and turn to him. And I want to tell you something. Just in case anybody is wondering, the life of holiness and righteousness and sanctification is a good life to live. I'm not missing out on anything because I'm a Christian. God woke me up with joy on my heart. He lays me down in peace at night. So no matter what the world says to me, I'm glad that I've been connected with Jesus. I've been baptized in his name. Some people say, well, what does baptism do? Why, why be baptized? I'm going to be baptized because God said be baptized. That's right. If a millionaire came in here and told me, you know, if you want a, a million dollars, go fill, fill yourself up with sand. I'm going to go get to the beach and just have all sand everywhere just because he told me I'm going to get a million dollars. But the Lord said, if you get baptized, I got more than a million dollars for you. I got eternal life for you. All you got to do is live with me. All you got to do is die with me. And if you die with me, you shall live again. Blessed and holy are those who die in the Lord, for they shall live forever in the presence of God. So I want to say I praise the Lord for my cousin today, and I praise the Lord for all of us. But if you're not ready to go back with him, you need to get ready. You don't know the day or the hour the Son of Man shall come. 
I was talking to Bishop Jackson. Who knew that those guys on that bridge was going to be they living their last day? But whenever the Lord come, I'm saying, come on, Lord Jesus, I'm ready. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. I've done what you've said. I've been baptized in your name. I am filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm walking up right with you. And if death comes today, it's all right with me. Amen, amen. If a man lives, he dies. But if he dies, he lives again. One of my daughters said to me, she said, Daddy, you, you think about death too much. She said, you are preoccupied with death. I said, no, I'm not. I'm preoccupied with living again. Ah, we're going to live again, but the way we live is going to be important to it. I'm preoccupied about going to see the king. I don't know about you, but I want to see him with my natural eyes. I want to touch him with my natural hands. I want to hear him with my natural ears. I want to be in his presence. I want to walk up right before him. Because I'm counting on it. I don't know how many days I got. But I'm counting on two things. They ain't nearly as many as I've already had. But when you walk up right before God, it really doesn't matter. Yes, sir. Young man, I told him once, look, you might as well get ready because you're going to die anyhow. I know it sounds morbid, but I'm getting ready not only to die, but to live again. Yes, not just to die. I want to tell you something, I want to live good, how about you? Amen. What about in a place where the streets are paved with gold? Oh, we get these little gold rings and you think that's something. What about a place where the streets are paved with gold? What about a tree that's good for the healing of the nation? Oh my God, if you happen to get sick, you just pull the leaf off the tree and you're going to be healed. What about living in a place like that? What about a place where there'll be no night there? I don't know about you, but I, I, I love this daylight saving time. I love for it to be light. I don't like for it to be dark so much. What about going to a place where it'll never be dark again? No more crying. No more mourning. No more pain. No more agony. No more suffering. What about going to a place like that? Okay, y'all. It's time for me to sit down. I know I'm over my time. God bless your family. I know sometimes people say don't cry. I don't say don't cry. But when you finish wiping your eyes, just go in and keep on living and praising the Lord. Mm. Sometimes you're going to have some, some days and you're going to hurt, but God will bring you through it. I preached a sermon one time feeling guilty about feeling good. Sometimes you're going to wake up and have a good day. And you're almost going to feel guilty. You said, well, we have lost our love. Well, what am I feeling good about? Take it. Mm. When God gives you a good day, take it. Because you're going to have enough bad ones. Take it when he gives it to you. <laughs> when God wakes you up smiling, go on and smile. Thank God for the life she lived among you. Yeah. Amen. So our prayers are with you. We love you. We're going to support one another. And we're going to make it. You hear me, family? We're going to make it. You might think you're not, but we are going to make it by the grace of God. God's going to make sure we make it. And so we love you. We honor you. We praise the Lord for you. And let's just keep on living in the Lord, and it shall be well. Yes, sir. You all can come at this time. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you.